Good afternoon. I'm looking at the morns. And the sun is shining. <laughs> it's quite warm. It's about 16. And I'm looking up at Rathfriland on the hill. And it, it has a very big hill from this approach. But you're saying to yourself, what else is there about with Freyland? It's a small town. It's set between Barn Bridge and the Moors. It's set between uh, Castle Wellen and the Moors. It's set between the Slave Krug and the Moors. So, what is there about Ruth Freyland? You know? Well, um, just looking at it from this vantage point, um, you can see the very strange funnel shaped water tower built in 1977 and it contains uh, a huge amount of water. In fact, that water tower contains 700,000 litres, enough for the whole town, and I think the town's around 5,000. Um, what else? Well, Margaret Bars was born here. She was an educationalist and a reformer and a businesswoman, and she founded Victoria College. She was born here in 1832. And just down the road a piece, Patrick Bron Bronte was born 1777 and he uh, um, gave us the three Bronte girls um, three of the, the greatest uh, literary figures ever <laughs> and, and Patrick came from here uh, just down the road self-educated almost and then moved over to England uh, unfortunately, Captain Moonlight came from here, the uh, infamous uh, bush, uh, Australian bush, bush ranger, and he, he got hanged for his pains at the age of 40. So it all came from North Island. And on top of that, folks, do you know what? My mother came from Ruff Island, 23 school road Ruff Island, in beside the cinema and she was Josephine Peters and she, when she married she was Josephine McLean and she lived in Banbridge with uh, my father and us three kids. So that's why um, Ruff Island is important to me. Bit of a claim in mind you. So let's let's uh, have a wee look at it. It's a hilltop plantation settlement, Ulster settlement. And it's between the Moorns, Sleeve Crib and Banbridge as I said. And look at it. Now doesn't it look like a pretty good defensive point? Yes it does. It was the capital of the McGuinness family. Gaelic Lords of Ive and they built a castle up here in 16th century and the ruins are still there and the ruins are where the uh, the water tower was built and incidentally that water tower fe fe featured on uh, Joe Mahan's uh, TV program Giants and um, the stones that they that uh, they found up at the castle were were used to build the town in and various other uh, <laughs> houses around the town square. 1760, the market house was built for a linen market by Miss Theodoria 
McGill and the village formed around that and there's a clock tower war memorial in there that is also significant to me uh, Dolly's Brave conflict was fought in 1849 on the 12th of July just down the road a piece uh, over next Castle Realm and I've just stopped a third of the way up the hill here just to show you um, the steepness of this imagine walking up this every day to the shops or to school and look at that isn't that unbelievable that's it, what I have just come up to get into a friend. And I've reached the top of the town. Just the same down to Moore Street. And this is me looking down John Street, past the Maple Leaf Calf and past the Church of Ireland. Great for cycling home, but not great to cycle to Rathfriend on the hill. So I'm at Rathfriend on the hill. Here's the layout of the place. All those places I remember my mother talking about. Down Patrick Street, Newry Street, Main Street, John Street. And here's the, the, uh, the town trail. And this is number one is former home of Andrew Scott. He was the Captain Moonlight, the notorious Australian bushranger. Uh, the remains of the Magnus, McGuinness Castle, 17th century, the water tower. Rathfriend Reformed Presbyterian Church, known as the Rock. Building erected 1861. Site of Catherine Schubert's home. Methodist Chapel, St John's Church, the Old George Hotel, Cadell Lane, the Market House, site of the Clan William Arms, former home of Mr R J Hudson, first in uh, Rathfriland, Presbyterian, third Rathfriland, the Quaker Meeting House, the oldest remaining place of worship in Rathfriland. Uh, so this small stone was erected in 1722. St Mary's Own Catholic Church and Second Rathfriend. So that's all the, the highlights of Rathfriend. Today the town is very much based on agriculture and this plinth here uh, certainly uh, would reflect that. What's that say? Ross Connor Lassay's Kill, Kill Araf and Cross. And there it is again. And let's look down the street. We're in, we're looking, we're going to look, uh, we're, we're in the square, we're in the main street, and this is Church Square. And we're looking down Yuri Street. I'm trying not to get run over. <laughs> Cars coming behind me. Yeah. 
And you've certainly got a, a right view of the countryside here. You must feel like a bird living up here. What's the weather like up here? You might say. Isn't this good? They're using the symbol of the water tower. 110 feet tall this, so it's quite striking. That little town in County Down was Freyland on the hill. Just showing you the other side of the market house. Has been used for various things don't know what it's been used for now. It used to be used, I do know that it was used as a youth club way back when. And this is the way it used to be. This is what the square looked like. Erected 1764 by Miss Theodore Dosia McGill, later First Countess Clan William. And this is a uh, war memorial. And I'm quite interested in this war memorial. Because I discovered Just recently, that I have, I had several great uncles and aunts that I never knew. I, I didn't. I, I don't know how this escaped me. But that's the uh, that's that's the long, the tall, and the short of it. And look at that. F. Gilmer, F. Gilmer, on my mother's side was my great uncle and he perished along with the rest of the boys that didn't survive in the First World War, probably at the Somme. He had emigrated to New Zealand along with his brother Joe who survived, he, he was in the First World War as well. And they joined up, as far as I know, they jo both joined up the New Zealand Expeditionary Force and came back and fought in the First World War. And Frank didn't survive, and Joe survived. Didn't stay in Ireland, or Rust Island. Didn't go back to New Zealand that he had emigrated to, but headed for a new life in Canada. And I've just uh, come in behind the fire station, or beside the fire station, and I've come across this church, this old church building. This is the meeting house of the Reformed Presbyterian Church Rathfrey, and erected 1777, rebuilt 1861. And my mother, my uncle, my aunt, my granny, all went to this church in Rathfrayland. In fact, a whole stack of other uh, uh, great grandparents and all the rest of it went here too. And you come back, you come out the back door to where the church and you're, you're, you've got the graveyard, but look at the view that you're getting out there. So this is the Covenanter Church, the Reformed Presbyterian Church at Rathfriend. Quite a substantial building. And look at this. I found the water tower. I'm nearly being blinded by the sun there. And beside it is Chief 
the Guinness's stronghold, the, the remains, the remains at that bottom row of stones would definitely be original. <coughs> A tower house built 1611, castle was destroyed after 1641, insurrection and lands forfeited. Now it's mentioning about Captain Moonlight again. And this is Castle Street and again you're looking way way over the such a panoramic view from every end of, end of every street you're getting a panoramic view. Down Patrick Street with the fire station down there and Main Street makes it. And probably the most famous place in Rough Island is right across the road. It's Graham's ice cream shop where you used to stop whenever you were going for a day, going to Newcastle for a day out. Graham's ice cream shop. That brings back my memories.